We are here at Sun and Fun. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm going to speak with a man named John McBean. As you can tell from his hat, his shirt, and his name tag, he is the man from Kit Box Aircraft. We want to talk a little bit about the airplanes, and we'll tell people how to get a hold of you and find out more about the airplanes. But you have some experience, John, that we really want to tap now. It has to do with this new Rotax 912 IS Sport. I understand from uh, Dean Vogel that you flew down here without this engine, with a different engine, had this put in, and then got some real experience with it. Tell us a little about that, John. We did actually the the original 912 IS engine that was introduced two years two years ago. Two. So two, two years ago, yes, two it's years already ago. two years. Wow. Yeah. Time flies time, when you're having fun. Or time's fun when you're having flies. It's <laughs> one or the other. The, um, uh, we had the original engine in there, and it did. It, it lacked in the mid-range torque, as, as many people know about that already. And you're uh, out there in high country where that might, uh, out in Idaho, where, where things are a little higher than they are here in Florida. Absolutely. And probably it, notice that some more. And it became very apparent. Uh -huh. uh, flying it at Sebring here two years ago uh, with the IS engine in it, 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 it did really well at sea level, but the minute you got into the mountains and the high density altitudes, it was a little anemic, um, yeah. so to speak. And uh, a new Rotax is working on, on, on a programming Thing with what they had, I guess they software released that stuff, here at yeah, Sebring, right on, uh -huh. the software stuff, and we did that flash here just prior to coming down. Because this is an electronic controlled airplane through uh, computer chips and so forth, not like the old days, this is a modern engine, so Correct. they could change some of it just with software, but it wasn't quite enough, was it? Correct. It was actually, it did remarkably well with just the flash. Um, we came down flash at 14.5. meaning an update the, to the, the update software. to the software, okay. correct. And, and I guess they call it a flash. It's an update to the software. Uh, we did that update. We flew down here at 14.5 um, over the Rocky Mountains. We did a GPS direct signal all the way down here. Wow. Um, had some great tailwind. So it did really well, surprisingly well. The performance, the reaction time, the response time, everything was much better just with the program update. Um, of course, I was coming down here with a mission. Uh, Rotax had asked us to come down um, because they knew we were putting a lot of time on the IS and they wanted to do the upgrade to the Sport because they were going to introduce it here at the show. Excellent. Um, so we came down a little early, we did the update. The update literally took less than a day uh, to do the update. And now, this I, is going from a 912 IS to the IS Sport. To the IS about. Sport, that is okay. correct. And, um, and, and, and it puts the aluminum air box in here, which is also thinner walls. So not only did it get taller, but it's thinner walls. So I think the volume inside is, is larger oh, okay. as well. So there's quite a bit more air coming into the so. engine. Yep. And, uh, the magic. And, between, and I'm, I'm sure when you talked to Dean earlier, um, he told you about the intake manifolds and the coils and all that stuff. So um, we were excited about trying it. We pulled the prop off the original engine because along with that upgrade came a new gearbox clutch. Uh, okay, okay. Because the, the torque has increased so much more. Sure, you're going to add a little more duty on the box then. So, so we needed a new, a new a tighter slipper clutch. Okay. Um, so we pulled the prop off. That was done. We never changed the pitch of the prop. We went ahead and put it back on. With the oh, sport. is that right? Okay. Uh, we saw almost a almost a 200 RPM, 175 RPM increase wow. in wide open throttle. We saw a couple hundred feet per minute increase in climb. Is that right? Yep. Well, now, that's quite a bit. What was what was climbed before and what was it afterwards? Just to um, get that context. We were over a thousand um, after, oh. and we were in the 750, 800, 850 range. Wow. Before. Well, that's a pretty significant boost. Yep. That's a 25 percent or so boost. It was. And, However, and this is in your airplane in that configuration. Your results at home may be slightly different. <laughs> yeah. um, results may vary. Um, the, of course, with that, that was the same pitch of prop. So that means higher RPMs because it was flat. We turned around and recourse or coarsened up the pitch of the prop by about a half a degree. Take a little heavier bite yep. of the air, which because you had what? the torque to do it. Now. Had the torque to do it. Now. So now you're climbing. Our climb almost stayed the same but we gained in speed. And what kind of gain did you get? We saw almost five mile an hour in speed. Really? And and to give you an idea on the way down And here, you didn't lose anything off a of climb when you did that? Not really, oh. uh, not significant. Now keep in mind, Dan, I'm a little out of my element down here in Florida. When sure, I get sure. back home to Idaho, I'll have a better idea of, of exactly what to expect of what I have. You're gonna get another test score when you get back in the high country out Not there to mention, the by the trip all the way home, I'll get fuel burn rates, I'll get all that stuff on the way home as well. So what did you do after you got the airplane? Okay, I mean, from Sebring to here, we're we're in uh, Lakeland, Florida here. You were down at Sebring where you had all the work done. That's only uh, maybe an hour flight. You didn't uh -huh. learn a lot there. You did some more flying than that though, I understand. I'm guilty. All right, yeah. where'd you go? Well, the, the okay. day was short at the fix, so the next sure, day sure. we got up and decided that we're gonna fly down to Key West for lunch. Um, so we went ahead and took off, and went down to Key West, over the Everglades, over the water, down to Key West, had lunch, flew around there. Um, 
ended up with about six to eight hours, almost eight hours on the airplane. Yeah, it's a little ways down there on the end of the Keys like that. Yep. So. So, so before we got back to Lakeland, we had, uh, or, or into Lakeland, we have almost eight hours on the sport engine. And, and quite honestly, performance wise, um, I was able to come back on the power, on the power settings, which will increase the fuel efficiency. Even more. It's Even already more. a very fuel yep. efficient engine. And I was maintaining the uh, higher speeds than I was coming down. Uh, the sport engine, by and far, is, is uh, it really hit the nail. I mean, it did a nice job. Yeah, that's job. quite a combination. Let's summarize here. You got more climb, you got more speed, you didn't lose any of the excellent fuel burn that it had to begin with, and your smile got bigger. Yes. That's all good. Yes. So. And we got lunch in Key West. <laughs> and you got lunch in Key West. Doesn't get and it better. didn't cost you an arm and a leg to make that change. No, it did. Uh, again, I, I believe Dean may have shared that with you. Uh, Rotax is offering this free, uh, free upgrade all the way through October on the IS engines. Um, all you have to do is pay for labor to put it on. You pay for the labor, they supply all the parts, you get all those four things we just mentioned. You bet. And your smile gets as big as John's smile. So there you go for the hundred or so owners that already have a 912 IS. Um, and to the envy of the guys with the ULS, I'm sure, but uh, that's how it works. And from now on, they're all going to be sport engines. And is your company going to support those? Absolutely. And in fact, we haven't come up with the exact pricing yet, but the uh, IS engine will be available on the SLSAs and also on the experimental amateur builds uh, here in the real near future. So in fact, actually, I should rephrase that. We have several customers already installing the IS in their experimental oh, amateur okay. builds. Yes. The SLSA we held short on. We were hoping for a change. And with this change, it will be available. All right, excellent. So let's talk a little bit about your airplanes now. The focus here was the uh, uh, was the engine and the, and the work that the folks at Rotax have done. But it's on a kit box here, and you got a couple of them here. There's one in the background of the camera, I think. Uh, tell us a little bit about kit fox these days. And what's uh, anything new with you that uh, besides this engine? Between, besides the IS, yeah, that, that's quite a bit right in, there. Of course, and the fact that we are in Lakeland. <laughs> which a we haven't been from here from, right. since 2009. Right. Actually. Welcome back to so, Lakeland. It's been a little while um, since we've seen you here. Weather's been nice. It's been they've done a lot of improvements out in Paradise City, so that's really nice as well. But um, as you know, Dan, the Kit Fox has been around for 30 years this year. 30 years um, this year. Yep. Well, happy 30th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the and how many how many airplanes does that translate to in 30 years of flying? The the last record we have is we have over 5,500 kits sold wow. worldwide. Wow. And, and how many of those are flying, would you guess? I know you can't always know all that. Well, the European yours? market's hard to track because we don't get sure. those reports and those things, but we suspect there's over 50% of them flying. Uh, so we're in the 3,500 3, to 4,000 range is what we expect. Wow, that's a lot of airplanes. Most of them that aren't flying anymore are actually the earlier ones. Uh, I suppose, right. Very, the, very early models. Yeah, and they were quite a bit different airplanes. They're quite a sophisticated airplane today. They were quite simple 30 years ago. Well, they were a lot smaller, too. And I mean, smaller. They, they, they were small. narrower. Uh, narrower. I mean, this is not yesterday's kit box. It, it's, uh, you know, you talked about higher, faster, longer. We have larger baggage areas, larger, larger cockpit areas, larger fuel capacity. Um, it's all four-stroke powered. The convertibility of the gear system, so it can be a tail wheel, it can be a tri-gear. Uh, the wings still fold. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of advantages that we've learned over the years. Builder's manual by far, by, by far is probably one of the best in the industry, in my opinion. Um, you know, we've just come a long way. You've come a long way, and i got to touch on one more thing because I know you've got some experience. you got your partner, Paul Littlebrand, down here with you. This airplane works well in a training environment, and some people might not think that. In fact, some people think that LSA and, and light kits and so forth, you can't do training with them. They won't hold up. You've got some information to the contrary. Very much so. I, I, Again, we've been building light sport aircraft for 30 years. We just didn't call them light sport aircraft before. Right. Um, they it, came. It, light sport came along in a circle you were already in. It right? did. And and the the Kit Fox, the Series 7 Super Sport, is built to a much higher gross weight standard. Was designed for Continentals, Lycomings, and, and a whole bunch of different engine choices that a person could use. Well, we took that airplane, made it into the light sport, the SLSA, um, and the structure is very sound. Uh, Paul Lederbrand was sticking with aviation out of Boise. He is the factory endorsed flight school. Okay. Um, and his benefit has been, for, for, selfishly for me, from an engineering standpoint, I get to see the punishment this airplane goes through. Well, uh, anything in a flight school, you have to let a student make mistakes, yes. of course. They can't learn things if they don't make mistakes, in my opinion, as an old-time flight instructor. Uh, that means stuff's going to get a little more harder use than it might be in the hands of a highly skilled pilot who always landed beautifully. Absolutely. Uh, Paul's first airplane had over uh, 1,700 hours and over 5,000 land takeoffs and landings in a flight school in Boise, doing mountain flying, canyon flying, landing on dirt strips, gravel strips, grass strips, uh, hard surface, I mean, everything in between. And did, did you sell him a lot of parts or not? Uh, we did not. 
<laughs> and I'm not. And, and, and I need to fix that. No. <laughs> the, the, the Iron Man is holding up very well. Um, he had the 912 ULS in the first, first uh, aircraft. He has since bought two more. They're 914 powered, which is an okay. option in our SLSA as well as the IS. Okay. So we have three engine options in the SLSA now. And the turbocharged engine does really well in the high density altitudes that we deal sure, with. Sure, gives time. you that extra boost that you need at yep. just and the right time. Ironically, I think the IS is going to do very well too because it's going to meet peak performance with the mapping and the computerized uh, control of the fuel. Right. And we'll he's trying to say way. wrap it up. I think. I think he is. So tell us where we can get more information on the Kit Fox uh, line of airplanes. We know where to find out about Rotax. Tell us about Kit Fox and where we get more stuff. Well, you can visit the website www.kitfoxaircraft.com or email at info at kitfoxaircraft.com or simply give us a call 208-337-5111. All right, sounds good. Thank you, John. Thank you, Dan. You can get lots more information about Kit Fox, about Rotax, about all kinds of airplanes and light kit aircraft on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining John McBean and me here at Sunnyfield. Thank you, Dan.